These are devotions for people at a social distance. Uh, this morning I was reading in Exodus chapter 15 uh, the story of the covenant between Abraham and, and God. A beautiful passage in so many ways. Uh, but I came across a few verses that have long troubled me, and I just want to talk to, about them a little bit. In, in Genesis 15, starting at verse 13, uh, it suddenly breaks in the middle of this covenant making to sort of God telling Abram all of the terrible things that are going to happen to his people when they go down to Egypt. Uh, it's pretty obviously a later author sort of inserting something, a commentary on the meaning of the, of the exile in Egypt and, and what it all means. Um, but there's one part of it that has always been a little bit troubling. Um, it says this, I will bring judgment on the nation that they serve, that being uh, Egypt, right? And afterwards, they shall come out with great possessions. As for yourself, you shall go to your ancestors in peace. You shall be buried in a good age. And they shall come back here in the fourth generation, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet complete. So the idea is that the people need to leave Egypt because the Amorites, one of the Canaanite nations, haven't accomplished enough evil, presumably to judge to, to justify the uh, terrible slaughter that will be described in the book of Joshua, the conquest. Now, there's all kinds of problems that I have with that. Uh, with that passage for, for lots of good reasons. And I'm, and I'm sure if you think about it, you'll start to have a few too. Um, the conquest of Canaan, in which the Amorites, among others, are, are slaughtered in, in basically genocidal terms, is one of the more troubling uh, aspects of the Old Testament story, that uh, God could ask for and justify wholesale slaughter, men, women, of children of whole nations. Now, on one hand, uh, one comforting fact is perhaps that, as far as we can see, that's not something that ever happened. Uh, the, uh, the archaeological evidence is that there was no such conquest, and certainly not a huge entry of a, of a nation into the land and the wholesale slaughter of the people who were there. just didn't happen. Um, but at the same time, the very idea that the Bible could seek to justify such an idea is troubling and has led to some pretty, um, <laughs> pretty bad uh, examples of people using that biblical idea. Uh, for example, uh, our apartheid in South Africa was kind of inspired by the whole story of the conquest of Canaan. You know, that because they had conquered the land, they could do whatever to the people who were there kind of idea. So it's a very troubling notion. Um, so, and yeah, we got to live with that part of the story. I think we should be struggling with that part of the story. Uh, and yeah, I don't simply applaud it. Um, but there is something that is kind of interesting. The idea that uh, a certain... You know, if you take it away as simply as a justification of something that we know didn't happen, and think of it this way, that there are times where, you know, something better is, God does intend something better in the world for the world, but over the short term, things have to get worse. Uh, that the, the wickedness of some evil people needs to have run its course before things can get better. And yeah, that's maybe a troubling uh, notion in many ways, but it is also kind of how the world works. It's just a, uh, you know, eyes wide open. That's how things work in this world. Uh, that sometimes uh, the evil, the wickedness in this world, and there seems to be a lot of it, right? It needs to run its course before people begin to open their eyes and see, you know, maybe we need to do something different. And as I think about, you know, some of our environmental problems, some of our economic problems, some of what is happening in, in Ukraine, for example, in terms of, of a, a devastating invasion, uh, unjustified, um, that some of this maybe needs to run its course in some sense, and yet we are called to be ready to wake up and take part in, in creating a better world at the other end of, uh, you know, when, when the, the wickedness of this world has run out of its, its steam. So that, that's a, an issue, an idea that I continue to struggle with in the Bible, but I just want to acknowledge it's there. And we need to be thinking about that, especially as we look around in the world today and see some of the wickedness, some of the things that we do not want to see happen, and yet it, they continue to happen. Uh, and how do we hold on to hope 
in such times. Just a few thoughts. Lord our God, thank you, you are a God of justice. And yes, there is evil, there is wickedness in this world, and, and it's wrong, and in some cases it's just needing to run its course. I pray you would give us hope and help us to hold on. Amen.